Hi, this is Prios and I'm a professional gambler. Long time no see, but yeah, I'm back with a new video. This sounds very, very interesting, to be honest. It is a video posted by Phil Garfond about the worst session of his life. We will look into, I guess, the biggest hands. I didn't uh, go into the video beforehand. And yeah, we will use PLO Trainer, that's uh, software to analyze hands from a GTO standpoint when we are unsure about the situation and trying to find the best solution for the given hand. And yeah, if you want to bring your game to the next level, link in the description to PLO, to, to the PLO trainer. There's also another program for Pot Limit Omaha GTO solution. This is called PLO Vision. This is from the guy who is also in the video from Phil Galfond. And yeah, if you need some coaching, I also got two coaching sites linked below. And obviously Holder Manager, one of the best programs out there where it's allowed, I highly recommend using it. You can also use Poker Tracker, both are from the same company and great programs and it's a lot of information you are missing and leaving on the table. And the program is not, isn't even that expensive, so highly recommend it. But yeah, without further ado, let's now get into the video of Phil Garfond. You are about to watch me get demolished. The year is 2014. I'm living in Vancouver. I have my office upstairs in this nice little, almost like loft. I, I remember this vividly because it was one of the worst sessions I've ever had in my life. And at the time, I'd been trying to get action against Isildur and he just, wasn't giving me action or wasn't around. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm sitting in the lobbies at, at a bunch of tables. All of a sudden he sits with me at 300, 600. And I also played a bit against him. I think he is a great poker player. He also learns quite quickly. I think he probably is not doing a lot of theory work at all, but he is yeah, a quick learner, um, very, a, a lot of talent, but his, his mistake is that he's always competing with the best and therefore you losing a lot of money back and if he's coming to good in one game the when the opponents just stopped playing him he just moves on to the another to another game where he has no clue and yeah opponents printing money in the beginning when he gets better and then most people stop playing him so yeah he's a terrible game selection but he's a he's a legend <laughs> yeah i i played him a lot in uh, six max games because yeah he basically plays heads up style in six max as well, and that's obviously suboptimal. And yeah, a lot of money could be gained from him there. And I'm a little tired; it's late in the day, but I've been waiting for this opportunity, so I hop in. Today, we're going to look through every pot <clears throat> that was over 200 big blinds. So the interesting thing is, we actually played almost 5,500 hands in this session. To give you some context, in a lot of my Galfon challenge matches, I was playing between 500 and 800 hands a day on two tables heads up. Here we played, I believe, four tables heads up and somehow got- Although four tables heads up, you're getting hands in very quickly. You are constantly clicking and stuff. And yeah, it, it's actually not that much. I think you can easily, if you grind all day, you can easily get 20K hands or something. But yeah, obviously 5.5K hands are quite a bit. It's a 5,500 hands. Because of that, we have almost 60 pots of 200 big blinds or greater, which is insane. I'm gonna no, go through no, them fast because false. I don't wanna keep you here for hours. Buckle up, <laughs> let's get into the action. So 2014 is actually a point in my career where I think I'm kind of at my worst compared to the competition. I had launched Runa once a couple of years ago. I was spending time on the business. We were trying to, to launch new things as well. I had met my now wife and girlfriend a couple of years ago and was spending a lot of time with her, a lot of time away from the tables. This is, I believe, around the time that better tools start coming out. Well, for online poker in general, I don't know about PLO, what was out at the time, but certainly tools were out that I was not using and my game had suffered a little bit. At the time, it, it wasn't really clear to me, but it's clear to me now. Despite- Yeah, it looks like uh, Phil is using Poker Tracker, not Holder Manager. I used Holder Manager my whole life, but yeah, it's just, uh, thing of personal choice, both programs are great. This being not, well, I mean, it's still a long time, it's nine years ago, but I think my play is gonna be kind of 2008 level. So we will see, as I mentioned, I'm gonna to try to breeze through these pretty fast, but if you have a question about an individual hand, let me know. All right, I raised the button, call a three bet, all good so far. 
he bets flop. Okay, this is terrible. So right off the bat, this is just bad. I yeah, I mean, back in the day, you just assumed, oh, I got a pair and a flush draw and a backdoor flush draw. And I also, it's also like three bad pot, just, let's just get the money. And I, I mean, I made the mistake as well. I mean, 2014, not anymore, I think, but in 2010, definitely made this mistake. Yeah, but yeah, yes, he already said, this, this is terrible. I, I don't know why I'm raising the flop with a hand that has just a very easy flop call. I'm getting it in really bad against a lot of hands. And I have playability I can just call. So this is terrible on the first hand. We get it in. And he has ace, ace, king, five. It's fine by him. Um, I think I know. Yeah, with the additional back um, gut shot, it, it's it's fine from Zildo for sure. Why I was raising. So I had this read on him that he was C betting the turn in three bet pots a lot. And I just felt like I kept having to fold to his turn C bets. And so I just kept making these bad, I mean, presumably bad. I think um, from, an, from an exploitative standpoint, it could make sense. Um, if you are under the impression that your opponent is folding way too much on the flop, then this type of hand can't be too bad to get it in because you might get like kings to fold, aces to fold, queen something to fold, and these hands give up a lot of equity, obviously. But I just know I would, I would raise a lot of flops. We'll see if they're bad. But I, I think probably I just made a lot of bad flop raises. Okay. Call three bet. Call C bet so far, pretty good. He pots and he has 23k behind. Yeah, the jam is fine. Um, obviously, I'm not thrilled, but yeah, perfect analyzed by him. I mean, we made bottom two pair, he could be absolutely screwed against something like aces or kings, but yeah, at least he has the backup with the flush draw. Yeah, not thrilled, but I think it's probably mandatory to get in. I just have enough equity against his range. And the rivers are not going to play that great. There's not a reason to, to wait till the river. Oh, bad river. Five on the first, king on the second run out. He had ace, queen, jack, jack. I mean, that's a little thin from him. And that's an example of like, he was just denying so much. Yeah, as I said, he's just a sick gambler without such a big, um, yeah, theoretical background. And yeah, this was also, yeah, <laughs> already analyzed it perfectly equity like that okay three bet good bet flop sure call the raise good i mean bet flop is good call the raise is good and i open jam this is good for me i like this line yeah i also like it i mean you cannot expect to get any folds on this turn, but yeah obviously on the flop he had no fold equity anymore he also was going with the hand anyways, but on some turns he might have had some fold equity against hands that he wanted to fold out. So yeah, good, good, good played. Gets it in with. Okay. What? Okay, yes, flush draw and affair. Yeah, they are getting it in quite light. Oh, no, I misread the hand, yes. Queen five with the flush draw, so yeah. Phil is crushed. Queen five with spades, and he's going to win both. Okay, cooler. Defend the big blind. He bets 3K into 3.6. So I raised um, against a small bet. So this is a flop where you mostly bet small these days. So against a small bet, I could raise my hand, but it's not. It is close. Uh, yeah, I think against a big bet, it's probably better to just call. Um, and I usually don't. Against a big bet, you're definitely not supposed to raise a hand like this. So this is kind of bad. Turn, I bet big. This is, I mean, I'm putting too much money into the pot, but it's not the worst turn bet once I get here. Yeah, give him all, all, all our reads as well. He, he seems to get in, or he seems to play a lot of bad hands as well and is not getting out of the way. So I, I don't hate it. A river full house. Let's get the rest of his money. And I need to just jam river. I have no idea why I'm checking. So like he's going to have some six, seven. Okay, this check is just stupid. I would get it in because, yeah. You basically get all the money from all the nines 
and you might and a lot of the nines might now check so easy jam Nate and I don't know aces with spades and stuff like that I need to just jam I think what I must have been thinking is that I know that at the time he like I felt like my image was a, a nitty image although so far it doesn't seem like I'm being nitty but I think he didn't think I would I thought at the time that he didn't think I would bluff this river after this line so I thought he'd make some big folds, so I decided to check this hand. Um, obviously calling, pretty happy. Seems like the same result anyways. And Isildur had him all the time. Yeah, cooler. Lee, but we ran into 3-6. Cooler, although I didn't need to raise the flop. Uh, checking his flop is okay. <clears throat> Um, no. So you check the flop to check call at this stack depth. I yeah, definitely check call. Um, so deep, we don't want to make it make the pot big. We just have nine sevens or top two. The king king also does not help our hand. And yeah, so many turns which we hate. So yeah, to see a safe turn first. Instead, check potted. We're not short enough for me to pot this in because he's going to call and turns are going to be dicey. He just rip it in. He does rip it in, which is fine with me at this point. I mean, it's, it's never in, in great shape if this happens. It's like, I don't know. Best case against a draw, worst case against 9977 or a set. Yeah, and even against most of the draws, he's behind. Point. Probably getting it in flipping against his range. Uh, so bad check rate. So let's see what. <laughs> Zildo also is like quite crazy. He has the big draw, but not with the nut flush draw. And yeah, an open ender and, and a flush draw. Yeah, I mean, it's overplayed as well at this uh, stack depth. It's for me, bad jam from him. He should just call. There's a lot of just like gambling from both of us so far. Yeah, back in the day, it was just like gambling and see whose hand wins and yeah the theory wasn't developed that far although he said it's 2000, 2014 people played quite good at this point already but seems like not these two <laughs> i mean i always had the impression from Isildur. i also at the time thought that phil isn't that good but now seeing some actual footage of him from the Galfon challenge I, I i say that phil actually improved a lot and probably trained a lot of solvers but back in the day, I also thought that he's not the greatest. And yeah, this footage confirms this assumption. Open the button, call three bet, flop three pair, just call. This looks good so far. Yeah, well played. I mean, so many uh, cards can change a board to your disadvantage. Yeah, waiting for a safe turn seems quite reasonable. And yeah, now we can get it in. Uh, stack is a little over 2x pot and he pots so very easy jam i hope yep he calls oh not a good river and second one also not great not the best uh take same hand best rivers he has king queen we chop it up i think yeah call three bet looks good flop a wrap with a diamond Ooh, this is doesn't seem too great. I mean, just call the flop, man. This is not a this is not a flop raise. This is a terrible flop raise. I don't even have an explanation. I mean, the explanation I gave is probably why I did it because I was didn't want to see the five of, or mm, the six of spades turn and then see a pot bet. But just deal with that. This is so bad. Gonna win the first one and lose the second one. Here's Jack nine. What are these guys doing? <laughs> okay, this is a very, 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 very gambling session. Five. Okay. Terrible from both. He definitely applies a lot of pressure. Okay. okay that, that, that was just a thing to say in a more friendly way, but he's playing like a complete idiot. <laughs> so that's the translation. Call three bet, call C bet looks good. Call turn bet looks good. Yeah, okay. Get lucky on the river, get it in. Easy game. 
or fine at least, and uh, call River Jam, obviously. Okay, this was quite lucky. <laughs> but yeah, I think both played it reasonable. Not flush. I mean, that hand's not a three bet, so he was three betting pretty wide. Yeah, the three bet is terrible. Wide. Call three bet. How does this pot get big? Okay. This is definitely not standard. I don't recommend doing that. Well, that's how. <laughs> uh, don't raise this hand on the flop. I should have a raising range and I should have a lot of bluffs, but I need more equity than this. I'm sure I just thought ace blocker, queen blocker. It's Good analysis. He calls, turn the queen, so now I can take my hand to show. Yep. Looks good on the turn. Down. Ooh, on the river. This is uh, interesting. I mean, I wouldn't hate a call. Ah, oh, close. I mean, everything is missed, basically. So is he crazy enough to bluff here? He might. And he pots the river. This is not the worst call. Yeah, I think so too. But I have the, I feel, the strong feeling that we are beat. But I think it's probably bad because he's not going to bluff with fives or better. And he's just going to have fives or better a lot when he three bets and then bet calls flop. Yeah, I'll have some missed flush draws, but not enough, I think. Yes. Full house. This was also, yeah, I mean, so I, I got this right. Yeah, easy call with the double pair. Call three bet, flop a set. Hopefully I don't screw this one up. Yeah, I like just calling. And definitely call turn against a little over half pot. And call the jam. Yep. Let's see what he has. Nice play. He seems like he value shoved the straight. That's also quite aggressive. Same can also be said for the turn bet. Nine seven. So just to get, just to get shot. This is not a three bet preflop either. Um, and this is very 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 uh, far away from a three bet. Pretty loose flop and turn play. Three bet flop two pair. Bet he calls. And that so far. Um, this is a tough spot. It looks like I just potted in to avoid any dicey spots. He jams. I think I have to call, but I don't know. Maybe not, honestly, even with those pot odds. 10 river, 5 river. He just turns. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate how he played that. Top set. So I'll lose that 120K. I mean, my play's fine. I was in very good shape on the flop. Standard three bet. I, I never check this flop these days, but if I did, it'd be a reasonable checking hand. Check call, turn the nine. one. He so he on an ace high board. You always want to see that, obviously. And yeah, turn is good. Um, going for the check race also makes sense, sense because he's wrapping an ace so far, and Isildur should have more straights than Galfond, I guess. Uh, question is, how deep are they? I think check call, but check call is fine. I actually, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's fine. We, we want to uh, slow play some of our hands and yeah, let him hang himself. I think that's a good spot for him to keep on bluffing. But raising's not the worst against him. Obviously call it yeah, off on the river when he jams yeah. and he has the same and hand. So he's so not he bluffing always. Unfortunate. Although he was ahead on flop. So three bet. This chat call I like. Not sure if that's a three bet. I promise that we use this program a bit. So let's let's do it. Uh, how deep are they? Let's just go with 100 big blinds. Um, uh, raise, download, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, this is close one, as it seems. So you 
and go either way. Yeah. Seems, seems it's, it's reasonable. It's, it's definitely, yeah. Like I could bet, but check calls good. Turn the nuts again on a rainbow straight board again. Def oh, he's again just check calling. <laughs> if the redraw as well, I mean, put in some check raises, call some. Okay. Definitely check call here. My, my range is doing really poorly here. Let's let him bluff. Call it off. Looks good. He just has the nuts again. They always have so the same we split end. that. Um, okay. Three bet, call four bet. Seems okay. Call four bet. Uh, is it. Yeah, I think with the hands very connected. Mm. This seems 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 okay. I mean, this is a hundred BB sim. Let's see what we do with hundred BB. I mean, when, if it's a call with hundred BB, it definitely has to be call with two hundred BB. And yeah, we also, I mean, this actually hold. But um, given how loose Isildur played, I mean, in ring games you could get in kings against him for 200 big blinds and expect to have the best hand decent amount of the time i mean uh, the majority of the time i would say so yeah against him you can't fold this uh, against a gto player this actually seems to be a fold at least for um 100 pb when we are 200 big blinds deep it's probably not a fold anymore but let's see I can get, I guess easy to do. I never fold with. Um, yeah, it seems to be decently close, but it's a, it's a call for two hundred BB. We have one hundred fifty BB, so yeah. Or do we have one hundred fifty BB, or just I'm just talking shit? I think I'm just talking shit. Yeah, 100 BB deep, and one hundred BB is a fold against the GTO player against Isildur. It's more it's closer to a jam, I think. Hey, this is going in. Sure. Obviously. I don't think open. I mean, I could actually just open that flop, although he's going to stab some like ace, five, six, seven, and fold. So yeah, I, li I like. Uh, yeah, he played it well. He should, he should check, I think. Check raise. Mm, I'd probably lose that. Don't know about that. Oh, he actually had it this time. Chop it up. Call three. This is a hand you could consider getting it. Although I think this has not great equity against anything, so you probably should not get it in. But it's it's way closer against Isildur than against a normal player. Our flop is quite good, so let's see what Phil does. Then <laughs> you're not supposed to do this. This Yeah, I think that's a bit over the top, but I don't hate it. This is another one that you're not supposed to do. I mean I think yeah, calling is obviously superior. It's not the worst, especially because he's three betting so light. Although actually that, that gives more two pair on this board. It's not the absolute worst. I don't really like it. it if he's C betting way too much, which it seems like he might be, this is actually okay. But, yeah, I mean, Izilo was very, very aggressive. So I think it's okay. But calling, I think it's better. It's a little loose. Let's see what we get it in oh, against. That's a pretty bad run out. It's a not great run out. He has ace, king, five. Okay, yes, not flush draw and a pair and a guard short. So yeah, it seems like Phil got the best out of him. Uh not Phil. <laughs> Isildur. Victor Blom. Deuce double suited. Standard from him. We'll chop that pot up. Nice flop for me after call. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh just call to flop. Um they're also deeper, so you like it so far. Long a three bet. Now we are getting it in. Uh, I don't like. I mean, we can just call and see if we hit. And I don't expect him to fold after potting. So just call. I mean, I do I think he's really pot folding here? Maybe maybe he was, in which case this is okay. Because like I'm, my... I think he's not pot folding ever. Equity is fine against everything. But I think it's just a call. Uh, most people don't pot fold on this board with this stack depth. 
So 142k pot, missed the first. Oh, he made two pair. Hit the second, we chop it up against two pair. All right. Good three bet. I mean, I bet range on this flop. Yeah, checking. I mean, against a, such an aggressive opponent, it could make sense to check some. I think now we want to continue with our um, scared or perceived scared line and just check all. Um, if I check, I like check raising, not check call. Well, it's not the worst, but I, yeah, I think check raising is also fine as you will continue with a lot of hands you dominate. But yeah, yeah, check calling. I, I would go for the check call line also to be balanced and stuff. I should just bet flop. <clears throat> And now I rip it in. Yeah, looks fine. I mean, he's probably not fooling anymore after potting. And we have the best hand almost always blocking our outs. <laughs> Although against King King, we got a, one more out now. He has... King 3. He also may have had a OESD, so an open man straight draw. Yeah, seems okay. I mean, the turn helped him a lot. Should he check turn? Probably not. I think it's fine from bros. King three. Um, he gets her on the first. He's got the open ender too, so we chopped this up. Um, pretty standard-ish from him. He could check flop, but probably bad is good. Not great from me, but not the worst. Mm, check, check. Now he bets. I mean, he has something, so I don't blame him for that. Good turn bat. Call the raise. Whoa. Not calling the raise. Re-raising the raise. Uh, don't like that. <laughs> um, I mean, like, to, to three bet jam here on the turn, I have to think that he's really bluffing a lot, which people are not doing. I think he's not bluffing a lot, and he will also call a lot. Uh, you just, just call. Like even, I think I just, he was so aggressive that I had a misconception of. So in other words, I translate again, Phil is on tilt. What he was doing, but he was just aggressive with like, yeah, some bluffs, but a pretty strong range. And he was like reasonably foldy and passive when he had a weak hand. So, or like, a, you know, the weaker portions of his range. So this is just kind of suicidal. I mean... My clubs are reasonably often going to... I wouldn't say that it's suicidal, but it's not great. It'd be good. I have a wrap. It's not like I'm burning a ton of equity, but it just seems unnecessary. Like he needs to be folding a lot for this Whoa. to be good. Okay, we got in. And yep. Um, hmm. Six, eight, got there. And we get there once. Okay, that And an open ender. So Phil was in bad shape. Yeah, while wow, we were in bad shape, he had the 10 8 with the turn set. Um, good so far. He bets. Um, I don't hate it. Calling also fine, but yeah, I guess he wants to protect his end and get calls from a lot of bullshit. But yeah, the thing is, this board is so raw heavy and he will be. In a world of pain on most rivers, but I think he probably has to call against donks most of the time. As yeah, easy to could use every scare card. It's fine. Yep. It is. I don't think I could fold against him. What the what's going on here now? Do we get it in or just call? I think we get it in. I mean Seems like there's no way out at this point. You could have like two pair and flush draw or something like that. Queen 10, overplaying queen 10. You also block queens and sixes. So yeah, I guess it's, we might be fucked. But yeah, what, 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 what can we do? Although I am, I mean, I'm really repping 5-5. Five five, so if he has queen 10 with something, he shouldn't really get it in. But he Yeah, he's stupid, spewy, over playing hands so yeah get it in he might 
think I should just call, but rip no, 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 get it in. Thing the rest in. This is all totally. I don't know. This is too much money to get in. In theory, certainly. Yeah, in theory. And um, <laughs> but this is not a theoretical <laughs> game where everyone is playing close to optimal. This is uh, two people spewing around. Like the raise is dicey. What to do against the three bet is not. I like. I think it's just a call. But this is. It's like a few dicey decisions, but nothing terrible. Okay, yeah, that's a better set. Yeah, but it's unfortunate. Um, I do block queens and sixes, but he does have sixes anyway. So that's too bad. Raise. In Isildur's shoes, I would also be a bit scared. <laughs> but uh, he, he is not. He's, he is uh, absolutely fearless. Okay, okay, is flop. I would check this on the flop, but the bet's fine. Definitely calling. Yeah, checking makes sense because you can be dominated from other flush draws, and then yeah, it really sucks. Yeah, calling the raise, obviously. The check raise, good. Glad to see I didn't rip it in there. Yeah, calling uh, good again. Um, good. Glad to see I didn't rip it in here either. Although this actually would why should you ever rip it in? Not be the worst spot to rip it in because he might have like. A stronger flush draw plus pair. Yeah, but he's not folding it. He's just <laughs> he's just calling it off. That folds. And nope, he's not folding. I, I disagree. I think he will not fold. Even if he, like if he has, he would think like okay, let, let's say he has an ace, so so top pair and some sort of flush draw. He would just say to himself, okay, I got two overcuts to the board, so I can be two pair as well, and maybe he has a gut shot or something. So he will. Talk himself into calling because yeah he has supposedly so many outs and it's PLO and it's easy to do anyway so yeah I think his assumptions are not correct. Ace eight dry or if he has seven seven. I think ace eight never folds. Dry he might fold. My experience with him. We'll do a jam here. So actually this would be a reasonable spot to jam with a five high flush draw and a wrap that just turned the extra three outs with the threes. Good river. Um, do I raise or just call? I think he's probably not potting a set anymore. I think he should just call. I mean, objectively, he's probably not folding anything for almost nothing left, but he, I, I mean, he's, I mean, I, I don't mind it, but yeah, I, I would just call against and yeah, see what it is. I mean, is he potting? He's definitely not potting ace eight anymore, I think. Or like ace seven with a flush draw. Oh. Yeah, I, I, it's close anyways. Maybe he is. I don't know. It's not much more. The race seems fine. Yeah, it's not that bad. Okay, he runs into the nuts. That's unfortunate. And he was dominated the whole way. Fine. I think Zildo would not fold this against a turn race. The thing could be that he's not putting in him all in. And on a blank, he might be able to win the pot. Although he has king high or whatever. He has the nuts. Um, is he folding the turn to pot? I don't know. Nope. Probably not. Hmm. Oh, sorry. I went kind of fast there. He had a flopped open ender plus not flush draw and uh, river the straight, a higher straight. Call nine. Okay, an open ender. I think he probably calls. Three bet. Call. What? Uh, <laughs> this is we are not playing no limit hold'em. This is a card a game with the four cards. This is really bad. Really, really bad. This is maybe the worst one yet. This is insanely bad. I mean... <laughs> it's definitely closer to a fold than a race. He's on tilt. I told you. Race. Um, but it should just be a call. Easy all in. I, really, I mean, it's, I'm surprised at how much worse I am here than in a session I recently reviewed from 2010. Like in 2010, I was better than this. And this is 2014. So I regressed. Yeah, seems like my read from previously that Phil wasn't playing great at the time is correct. 
call. Check raise is good. Yeah, I'll check raise. Very reasonable. Good. Ooh, that's that's not so good, but I think you just get it in. I mean, you potentially have a lot of outs, and I mean, what, what, what do you do with like nothing left on the turn? You might even get it in with the worst. You, some, I mean, you have you can dominate draws because you have top pair as well. So yeah, get it in against the three bet. I don't think I can fold, and I think just being out of position. I think I just ever fold. Is this guy good. is crazy as well. It's fine. Oh, yes. again, no. dominate. But, but yeah, that's unfortunately. I played with him a lot too, and he is crazy. And this looks like he's not crazy. <laughs> so I was in bad shape, but I, I don't mind my line. You're not yeah. thrilled once he three bets, but you just have too much equity. And like against his betting range, you're doing great. So the check raise is good. Call three bet, flop top two, rip it in. This one's a little more reasonable. Um, still probably call today, but it's not It's not the worst. I think it's reasonable. He calls. Saving 23K. He jams <laughs> 20, well, 20. I mean, pot odds. 24K in on the turn. I have to call. And he had that. So. What? Queen, queen. He was raised on the flop and continued? 4-4. Four, four. So bad flop call from him, I think. Or, I mean, it's definitely bad in theory. I was raising open, dry open enders, though, so it was probably good in practice against me. <laughs> I mean, that was probably a one-off. I mean, I can't imagine, but Phil is that bad at that time. So I think that's a very bad call. <laughs> yeah. All right, I won one. It's exciting. Call three bet, call C bet. I was going to be very sad if I raised. Call again. Is that? He's potting. Um, oh, we have nothing, almost nothing left. What do we want to get it in? I mean, he could be cr going crazy with like ace high flush draw or set. Are we folding any rivers ever? I think not, so I would dig it in. I mean, you got at least, at least a 10 and a 9 as backup. The kind of interesting thing, I'm just like trying to put myself back then. So like these boards, when the straight turns, I was betting way too much in position, like way too often. And so I... Th in, in theory, you could make some more money from like blockers. I think like he, he might check a lot of good hands here. I guess I'm wrong because he called... Yeah, so he was bluffing, so good, good all in. My guts were right. No, okay. So he had the, the combo draw. So a good jam-ish for me back then. I could also call, though, and fold Club Rivers and, and yeah. call it off on bricks. Not sure if this is possible against Easy Lure. Okay, good. Call three bet, call C bet, call churn. It's really interesting that he's sizing down here on the turn. So he's three quarters on the flop or a little less. And he's just over half pot on the turn. He's sizing base. to have a good size left on the river. That's what you did back in the day. I like how he plays it though. I, I mean, like the, all of his the, sets can keep betting big, I think. Well, yeah. He doesn't have Jack 10, I think. When he... I mean, he could jam Jack 10. I mean, he did uh, something like that in similar spots. And yeah, that's, I mean, it looks like we are beat. But he could be bluffing. I mean, he's wrapping ace, ace, king, king, and stuff. It sucks, but I think we are t too good to fold. He sizes down. I know I have a full house, but I don't think I beat anything. Really? Okay, I mean, the, the sizing theory actually has some merits. So, what? I mean, it's easy to do. Uh, and he's wrapping the kind of hands perfectly. Could just having like. Six, seven, eight, nine. That's value betting. He definitely could bluff here a lot, though. Yeah, cool. Like even like king ten ten might play this way. Yep. And he got lucky on the river. Okay. He's queen. That's why he sized down. Interesting. I mean, is he calling a jam on the turn? I guess he still calls, right? Or is is he folding to a jam? I mean, he bets so big on the flops that. Um, 
just check rip this. So if he's stabbing this flop way too much, which he might be, then this seems okay. Like I think it's not okay because he's probably not folding aces and shit. Um, and then when he has a better over pair, we are fucked. But if the on the positive side, if he has another draw, we probably yeah crush him because we got parts of the draw covered and also a good pair. It's pretty loose to get in, but yeah, too loose. Reasonable equity against two pair, decent equity against combo draws, and uh, not doing that well against aces. A lot of fold equity, presumably, or kings. First one's going to be mine. That's nice. Not sure how much fold equity we got. Nice. Second one, I have a chance against nine seven. I have nine seven. He's getting on the like his flop bet. <laughs> yeah. That is whatever his jam on the flop against my race seems pretty. I guess he's seeing his hold cards and he's confident getting in. Yeah, just joking. Pretty bad. Um, he's in a tough spot though, but okay. Good three bets, uh, C bet range, but I decided to check. Now check call is good. Check call again, or is this the time to, to again put all the money in? I mean, yeah, I actually, I don't hate it. Because we could have some full equity, and we have outs in case we are behind. He's going to stab this board a lot. Check call is good again. No, yeah, I wouldn't hate check raise. As mentioned, yeah, okay, check call again on the river. And looking to call it off, yep. which we do. He has. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Unlucky. The set. Did he three bet that? No, Phil wants free betting. Um, I think this is going to be, I mean, once I check flops, very standard for me, and I think I'm going to do pretty well. And actually, he could have a six for value. Yeah, I think this was played okay-ish, or, or good by both. Okay, single raise pot. Very bad c-bet for me. Don't do this. It's Agreed. just the wrong kind of hand. Um, we can fool it now. I'm supposed. I'm assuming I didn't fold because this pot's going to be big. Uh, I think I should fold to the raise once I bet. So two bad plays for me. Okay, no. We picked up a little something. He's not folding again. Now we turn something, and so this call is justified. Yep. And easy to check. So we get it in. Ching ching. Jam. 10 high flush. He calls with set with a heart. Pretty good. Uh, he should check call flop, but not the worst, but standard from him. Otherwise, I think. Yep. Looks good. Call three bet. Okay, I suspected I might do this. I mean, it's not ridiculous, just in that if he's C betting way too much stuff, but he's probably not folding any over pairs. Um, so I don't know. He might fold some like jacks or something, right? I, I don't hate it. I, I think it's okay. And how often is Isildur supposed to have hit anything here? But he's probably just sticking it in with aces and kings, maybe even queens. But yeah, I don't hate it. I don't know. Hit a straight on the second one. He just has ace, he ace, four. So I mean, I'm kind of flipping ish. But use my position. I don't know. Once, whatever. Um, here I should raise flop. Yeah, that plus draw always very good. And if you have two power to go with it, then it's even better. Just too much equity, I think. I just call. Turn, turn the full house. Yeah, call again. It's good. Again, size down. Turn boat. Easy call. Let's see. Yeah, again. Call down. See what happens. See what he has. Easy call down with 9-5. Okay. Yeah, at least he's blocking the full house. And he's bluffing. So that worked out well. I think I raised, should raise flop, but not a big deal. And then the rest looks good. Four bet aces. 
See bet. So this see bet's too big. I don't need to bet this big. It's not way too big, but it's a little too big. Ooh, bets. Yeah, we don't fold. I mean, you can have like nine, ten jack, or something in that that covered up. He, she, she could be bluffing. He jams. I mean, I don't think I could fold. He's gonna have like a bunch of jack ten type combos, and you know, yeah, he has a queen a lot, but yeah. I don't think I can yes. fold. He has queen nine. Oh, queen nine, actually. You should yeah, consider imagine. calling queen nine there, but it worked out. That's a good flop. Uh, really good flop. He decides to slow play. How deep are we? Flop the super nuts. Yeah. Okay. Slow play some. Could also decide to raise. It's easy call. I guess so. A little deeper, I would raise this. Here, I think I just call again. Yeah. Man, maybe it's a raise. I don't no, know. I think it's okay-ish. Checks. What does he have? Give up. Yeah, I, I also like the big bet. Um, I think um, he probably has something, but not a straight. But something that he's willing to call down. As Phil's line also looks a little bit full of shit. And he's probably not assuming that Phil would just call the straight twice. So very good bet. I would actually go for pot. Up, I guess. No, because he has to put more money in. So we check calls. Um, I don't really know what this would be. Okay. Um, pretty good line by him, actually. Yeah, it looks okay. Makes sense. Uh, he's right to not value bet river, especially blocking the kings. Okay, easy call of the three bet. <laughs> uh, this is terrible. I mean, he really likes his old man does. Although he, this time, it's a little bit better. Two back to flush draws and the six supposedly also gives us the best hand. So this is way better than the just the open ender, but I actually don't hate it against the Zildor. I think it's okay. Now I'm doing the same thing again and again. This is just terrible. Nah, the other one was way, way worse. Um, and Zildor also is capable of getting it in with some bullshit. Obviously, I call it off once I raise, but I just need to call flop. It's dumb. Yeah, this is from a theoretical standpoint, but given the opponent he plays, I think it's okay. So what does he has? Yeah, something dumb as well. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, you just saw a pair in a guard shot. Or like an under pair in an open end, and you thought, okay, let's get the money in. And you got excited. Got some weakish holdings, but I'm not making them fold. Check raising flop. <clears throat> How deep are we? A lot of, I don't know. We're seeing all the hands that, that were big, so maybe he was folding a lot of flops. I think it's okay. Flops, and some of this stuff was working, but it doesn't seem right. It would, why is he checking now? I would continue betting. I could check call, but check raise is good. I don't like the turn check. I should just bet. Yep. Obviously, now I'm jammed. Yep. I mean, pretty happily. I think he has. A, <laughs> nah. Let's see what he has. He has windows. Okay. Reasonable on the turn, on the flop. Zilda could have gone, gotten away. It could fold. I think he actually probably should. It was a race for pot. I mean, his, his flush draw could be dominated and he could be in very much pain. Queen deuce with diamonds. So. Yeah, his flop bet's kind of whatever. Call the raise is good. Mm, yeah, it's... it's uh, uh, I don't know if I agree with this. is that good of a call, but yeah. Whatever. Turn bet is probably good. I like the turn bet. So reasonable from him. Okay, pretty weak hand, but raise and call three bets. I think this might not be even be an open. Is this weak enough to not open? We will find out in a second. Yeah, this is might be a fold. I think I, I say it's a fold pre. Especially against someone who is also rebetting. Way too much. I mean, this hand performs very poorly against a guy like that. 
So against Isilo, it's 100% a fold. Even against the GTO opponent, it's a fold. Uh, how big is the mistake against the GTO opponent? Not that big, but against Isilo, it's a lot worse because he's putting on the pressure all the time. And this hand cannot stand any pressure. It's okay, he's betting big. I mean, I think I still have to call an open ender, but it's not entirely That's clear. Okay. It's um, pretty yeah. dicey spot on a wet board like this. Get it in. Turn the second nuts with a redraw. Boom. I think given the way he's playing, I just need to rip it in. Yep, well played on the turn at least. Spades are good. Oh, he had the same hand. <clears throat> but he, uh, on the second run out, hit 8-6 for the full house. So he'll take three quarters. Mm, I think it's just a call pre. Now, uh, I, I'm pretty, I'm like 90% that this is just a call pre. Oh. Looks like Phil was right. According to the solver, this is supposed to go into our three betting range. Yep. Okay. Facing the four bet, I don't know. It's maybe a call. This is bad. Just check flop. If I do want to have some bets on this flop, I think I go smaller. And this hand. Yeah, it's also, I mean, would Phil ever do this with like 6-7? I wouldn't necessarily expect him to do it. So yeah, I think this is like quite transparent and always the kind of hand he's having. And it's just, it's just bad. This is a really bad hand to be betting. So I'm going to fish. Hit two flushes and one. He flopped the nuts. Wow. Yeah, bad play. Like yeah, this is a very bad play. I think you should also check call flop and can use some scare cards on the turn or to get his opponent off other over pairs that he does not have beat. So yeah, not a good play. Mm, terrible play. Because you're gonna the flop's gonna go check check a lot. You're gonna get to realize your equity a lot, and he's gonna bet small a lot, and you can just check call. So you don't have to. It's not like you're putting stacks in or getting denied equity a bunch. Uh, so call a three bet, bet flop, which is fine. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. I mean, we are not that sad if we get all blown out of our hand on the flop. With this hand, he calls, turns him out. I think you should check back. Outs, good check. Nice. Seven's good. River tri value bet. trips. Good bet. Ah. <laughs> Against him, we probably have to call. And yeah, we also already said that our hand is sort of weakish. Yeah. I mean, we got a seven. What are we going to do? And he's bluffy. Not sure if he's bluffy in this spot. Ugh. And he raises. I mean, I think I need a call against him, basically. Yeah, I hate it, but I think call is okay. But I'm having the strong feeling that he actually trapped with ace ace or something. Although, is he? Nay, no, no, no. I, I, I changed my mind. I say call and expect to be good. I, I don't feel bad about this one. I lost. He actually was trapping with aces. I thought that he probably wouldn't do that, but he did. I assume I did because I lost every hand this session. Defend the big blind. Check call looks good. Check call turn looks good. Check jam river. Check raise river, obviously, Easy. with the nuts. He calls, so he's got a flush. Second nuts for okay. him, pretty standard yep. cooler. Okay. okay. What happened here? I raise pre, he donked flop. I forgot that he was doing this, but he was doing a lot of this. Man, I, 
it'd be fun to go back into his stats and figure out how to, how I'd exploit him now. But I, it's gonna take. It's like a four hour project. And, um, it'd also be fun to go into my stats and see how to exploit me because I was playing terribly. Uh, so calling a flop is good and raising the. Tr we are very deep, right? Turn now, good. Okay. But we are very deep, but yeah, I think it's still good raise. And yeah, on the river, obviously easy value bet. Calls. He could also call light because he expects us to have a lot of busted draw type stuff. Where in reality, we got effectively the nuts. I mean, I don't know why I bet three quarters just pot river. Calls. What does he have? Under. Some bullshit. Ace jack. Or so. Like six six. Wonderful. Jack deuce with diamonds. Yeah, that's a good read by me. <laughs> okay. If you have a donking range, I think his flop donk is good, and turn bet is good, and call of the raise is good, and it's, yeah, it's all fine. Once he, if you have a donking range, so well played. It's okay, and the river, uh, the river call is also. It makes sense. I mean, everything missed. You are even blocking like full houses, so it's not too bad. Hit hand by both of us, assuming you let him have a donking range. Easy check call on the flop. Sorry, I go too fast. When I review hands, I just speed through them. Anyways, check call, standard with pair plus open ender. I turn the nuts. He's betting big. Just call here, don't raise. Good. It's not enough of a redraw in this spot. Oh, we got the nuts, so easy game. And he pots, I raise. He calls probably a chop. Yep. It is a chop. A lot of split pots. Um, this is a bad three bet, and this is a bad check. <laughs> I just don't. You don't need to check anything on Jack Ten Nine. I don't hate um, check against Izilua, who is, will be stepping a lot on this one. But I guess I didn't have a small sizing, and if you don't, if you don't have a small sizing, then sure you can check the, this board sometimes. Um, I yeah. Continuing to trap, makes sense. I like my turn check after he checks back flop because I think he starts betting like he jack six and stuff like that. So he bets, I raise. It's a little too big to raise, I think, but it's okay. Could also go just check call, I think. Uh, raising, probably not a big mistake against someone who's basically calling everything who has a little something. That's fine. He's just, just he rips it in. in. He shouldn't really jam anything here. I think, but he does. What does he have? Okay, the money would have gone in anyways, always basically, right? And he's not folding the under trade or whatever, the, the, the like the idiot trade. Okay, I win. Um, his flop play and turn play, well, his flop play is good. His turn bet is pretty good, although he could check that back. But he should not check. I mean, he should probably bet fold, I think. Your bet fold seems tight. Tightish. But yeah, against Phil, probably makes sense. Check call seems okay. But I should just fold here. Clear that. Check race. I mean, I actually don't hate it because you, if he's getting a lot of folds, yeah, uh, we only saw big pots. So this is skewed, but if he has a tendency to bet fold a lot of on the turn, I don't hate it. Okay. This is, this is a really bad play. This might be my worst play yet. No, that's not the worst play. The open end up play was the worst. Um, Given how I remember him playing, I think it's actually okay-ish. No, probably not. I don't remember all the plays. It's probably not the worst, but I'm sure I was thinking, well, I can't check all this, so why don't I check raise bluff and try to win the pot, but it's just such a bad, bad hand. Uh, you, so you just need to fold. I just need to fold. And now I have a pretty good bluff spot. Sure, bet big. Call it off, bluff call.
Uh, obviously not. He plays good. He jams. That's unfortunate. And 86K lost or so in that pot. That didn't need to happen. Three bet. That's a little too big, but okay. Could better check turn. I check. He bets. Okay. Looks good so far. He jams. I guess I called this. Why did I? Hmm. The only flop draw just got there. I mean, we block a little block out of the eight. Oof. I think he should not call this. I call this. I mean, I unblock spades. He is, if he has a hand like 10 9, he's going to play a 10 9, 9 8. He's going to play this way a lot. I block 10 8. I don't know. It's not the worst call in the world. It's fine. He just flopped the nuts. The, the thing is, these plays get worse as you start half potting flop because they need to start folding some weak 9 8 hands and stuff like that. But maybe he doesn't, anyways. All right, raise, call three bet. Call flop bet. That's a big bet for this board, but that's what we were doing at the time. Decide to bet turn. I would check this, um, especially with the nut straight outs that can value bet. Like if I have river a 10, I can value bet. So yeah, I don't think I like betting this. Uh, but obviously, after I bet, I think it's okay. The second half blocker the turn, I can't value bet when I hit the ten. But once I bet turn, I need to bet river. The river bet's good. He calls with ten nine oh. flush. Well played from him, and not terrible for me. But I think the turn bet is that's not the right combo for it. Mm, looked okayish. Um, I mean, not ridiculous, but don't bet this flop. And then just fold to the raise. Don't call this raise. This yep. is a really weak hand. So you, you I mean, bottom two in PLO is just very, very bad. I mean, back in the day as No Limit Holding player, I made the mistake overplaying it in the beginning. And then I analyzed the spots and it's just terrible to have a bottom two. It's just like, it's, it's not worth much. You need to, you, Phil Galfond from 2014, you need to know the difference between absolute hand strength and relative hand strength and like playability and this hand yeah i have two pair but this is bad in almost every category <laughs> i don't beat any value i'm drawing dead basically against value i'm not gonna be able to continue on many turns although obviously it looks like i will because this pot got big but yeah this is just clear fold that's a very good turn for me easy call and a good river so yeah, calling it, it off down. hoping he has four four all right, he had a missed draw. Makes sense from him all around. I should fold flop, but then the rest looks good. Yep. Nice to win a pot. This this session review is actually tilting me, not because I'm losing, but because I'm playing so badly. Call three bet, call C bets. Bets looks big. I kind of don't believe him that he keeps betting this turn, uh, but just call and let him bluff river. Yep. Well call. I, I, yeah, I just don't really believe him, although he probably has it because I lost. Yeah, he just has it. Yeah, I, mean, I thought he would that's expect I mean, me to bet this, this turn this, a lot. This was standard. Okay, three bet looks good. Lot bet looks fine. I mean, it looks good. Turn bet, yeah. Whoa. I don't think I can. I think he cannot get it away, but... Yeah. That's a bit, but yeah, our hand's too good. I'm not folding. Fold it. Um, yeah, just get it in. Usually going to be behind, but I have two to one and could be add. Like, as you've seen, we shove some combo stuff that we shouldn't. So yep. it could be way ahead, potentially. Um, Ooh, no, we just not ahead. <laughs> turn top set. Lucky to get half. Uh, I think this is not a three bet, but whatever. Call the four bet once I do three bet. Open jam. I mean, whatever. I... Uh, it's the money is getting in anyway. So, it, although I think it probably makes more sense to check because he could get it in with something that has no equity at all or make a big bet with some ridiculous stuff. So, I, I like a check better. I, I would check, but betting is fine. Let me get it in. Probably flipping against his range. Those are good runouts for us. Cases. We're going to win one. Call three bet. Call C bet. Call turn. Oh. This is the stack's going 
back and forth. These guys. This was a crazy session. Um, there's not that much left. I mean, we're definitely calling turn. Question is if we should shove it in in order to not make any mistakes on the river. And as Isildo now probably just tilted. Not happily. Uh, I don't see why I'm jamming it in. I think it's not that bad as he could get it in with worse now. He was betting for whatever reason. Just play that. I'm afraid to play the river, that's why. Yeah, well, I still don't hate it. I should just give them how they played so far. Let's call turn. Uh, 10 8. Is it something? Yes, it's a straight. At least we got a few outs. He has the turn straight with a weaker flush draw, and he's going to get it all. Another bad play for me. Gets punished. Calls. Yeah. Um, so far, so good. Um, I mean, I'm not folding. I think just rip this in, probably. Yep. I mean, in theory, I think it's call, but just raising probably against the way that I think he's playing is good. Yep. He's just got so many, like, just ace ace queen from what I've seen. He's also having a lot of top sets, seems. He got lock lucky in one spot, right? Check nine. Yep. Just top set again. Lucky to get half, though. Three bet call, four bet, all looks good so far. Yeah, here I don't mind the open jam. Check raise is okay too, but here he's gonna have some. Yeah, open jam is good because he has no pair and yep, he could fold like no pair hands, like ace, king, queen, three or whatever he's four betting with. Some ace, king, queen, 10 that I'd like to just fold that he could check back with. That run out looks good. This run out looks good. Take it down against Ace King Jack Eight. So I mean, if he has that with a nine, well, does he fold a nine? If he has it with a four instead of an eight, you know, he's folding. I, I almost called to send. Bye. Well, maybe not the best best hand. Uh, this should be a fold for me on the flop against this sizing. If he's third potting, just call. But nothing great can happen. I mean, it can, but not a lot of great yeah, things can happen right. with this with this uh, combo. Oh, that's that's one of them. Very great. I think it's just a call. We're a little too deep to rip 200 big blinds in here. Mm, so this yeah. is too much. I think I just need to call. He is yep, betting too right. much, like we've talked about, but it's too much to put in. <laughs> Speechless. Actually get it in, you know, a little bit ahead and hold. So it's 240k pot. It's quite a bit ahead, I think. How did I... I mean, I guess I've lost most pots, but didn't think I was going to win one of the biggest. Whoa. <laughs> he check calls in Donk's turn. I didn't know that he was doing that. I don't know what this is. I mean, my hand's just a call. Yep. Good. Right, so what is he doing? I want to see. How I'm going to get to see his hand. Okay. I guess both guys now have check nine. And I think. I wonder why I went small. I'm repping a straight. Yeah, he should raise for the max. Great. Maybe I'm trying to rep like five, six and hope that he does something crazy. Okay, when he just calls, I assume fill one. What does he have? He must have five, six. Five, six, nine. So we turned the extra outs and he was just like, I'm going to lead and make Phil fold his jack, jack, 10, three hands. It's not unreasonable. But it's pretty. Is he even an open? Probably. King five eight six. Don't forget, you can get this program too. You want to. Get great in this game. Oh, this is okay ish. Should we call it three bet with it? Though, King 586. Well, we are also a bit deeper. So we are just, we are, I think we, this is a 100, 100 BB sim. And we are not supposed to. 
call Freebird. But it's also not the biggest mistake. I wonder if things change. Oh, this was a 200 BB uh, sim. Uh, do things change in a 100 BB scenario? Let's find out. Eh? Should raise, but it's very close. I think when it's a fold for 200 BB, it's probably also fold for 100 BB. It is. And it's also a bigger mistake to call. Tough to balance. Um, okay. Call 3-bet, call C-bet, looks good. I don't understand why the pot is getting big. Facing pot. Um, I honestly don't know what this is. I mean, he has an open ender and a pair, so it's also like not much left. It's like the worst open ender. So I think holding is reasonable. But it's definitely close. Phil is also unsure. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> it's not that. I'm not supposed option. to jam. Uh, it's call or fold. Yep, definitely. Never jam. And, uh, I'm going to win one of them. Big eight. Okay, guys, yeah, so this we do quite bad. W one in the... <laughs> okay, let's... Yeah. It was also one of his worst plays in the session. Call, but not thrilled. Call again, I guess. This is really dicey already. Uh, I guess call. <sighs> this is less bad than the one before, I say. As he might have all sort of draws. I have to stop jamming these. It's so bad. It's not, not as bad as the one before. Gonna win one of them. Okay. Kings with diamonds. Yeah, that's really, really bad. I'm, I can't believe how much worse I was here than... A raise and a call. Makes sense. He could also like click it back or something, looking like he's full of shit. In past years. I bet call check raise looks good, obviously. Good turn was a flop, my sizing's right. too big, but good bet nonetheless. Yeah. Easy call. Yeah, now call again. Call on the turn. Did he size down? Full pot calling down. Pots. Do I shove the rest in or just call? I think just call, but it's close. Yep. yep. Well played. That looks like a straight flush. Straight flush. Fair. Wins. Big pot. And actually, that's it. We did it. We got through all of the big pots. I mean, we did it. Yeah. Wow. I, I hope you enjoyed that. If I did not enjoy that. You made it so far. All. Consider to check out my other channel too Finance with Excel. I talk about finance, money, cryptocurrency. And it's way undersubscribed. And as a poker player, you're probably also interested in making money. So, highly recommend checking out my other channel too. Let's see if well, there's actually. something else to say that is interesting. I'm also not sure if he even lost that much. The 500k minus was just <laughs> to tease you and get some clicks. But I think nobody is in here. Seeing myself play so badly. When I, I recently reviewed another session oh, against Patrick Antonius. Is actually in here. Uh, hello, my friend. At least one guy is watching. Nice. Well, was from watching. 2010 and I actually liked my play here I'm shocked that I played this badly I must have like I mentioned that I had a lapse in 
skill <laughs> at this point in my career, but I didn't think it was this bad. I didn't think I'd regressed. I thought I just stopped. Yeah, this was terrible. <laughs> growing and my opponents surpassed me, but uh, I actually regressed. And it, you know, it's some combination of going to the session, obviously tired and probably getting tilted. Um, but also I think there was a lot of fear at play for me, just thinking back to how I just was so sick of folding turns to his turn C-bets because he three bet so often and he C-bet flop so often and he C-bet turn so often. These are all very bad justifications for his plays. But yeah, it, it, I guess it's human to act this way. But yeah, you should stop this side of yourself when you are in game because this it will cost you money. And it felt like, and I mean, technically he did, that those pots just kept happening and I kept folding turns. And so I just wanted to shove flops and shove turns because I thought that would combat his really high frequency. As you saw here. If this is his worst session, I think he's probably doing okay-ish. I, I mean, I wonder how much he won or lost in this session. Didn't look too bad, honestly. I mean, these are just the pots that got big, so maybe he was bet folding a lot. But he had decent hands too. Tell us the result of the session, please. So, but I think he probably would also use a thumbnail that is more clickbaity if he lost that much. So maybe the result was even okay. Yeah, not happy right <clears throat> now reviewing that play. Like it actually upsets me even today. Not because I lost so much. By the way, I lost just under nine hundred thousand this session. Whoa, that's more than five hundred k. Nine hundred k session. Oh, easy to do. Oof, that, 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 that hurts. So now I understand, it, I understand it even better that he made some of these plays. But yeah, actually, it's not that bad, to be honest. I mean, we are playing 300, 600. This is only a 50 buy-in swing. This is sort of normal. I mean, variance is huge, especially if you play as pure as these guys. So against Isildur, you have two... 20, uh, you have 20 BB, uh, 20 big, uh, I mean, 20 stack swings all day long, as he's crazy, and you have to call on a lot of stuff. And he's also going crazy with his free and forwards. Yeah, it, it sounds like a lot, but in terms of big blinds, it's actually not that bad. That's not the part that upsets me today. The part that upsets me, although it certainly upset me at the time. The My worst session, by the way, was for the interested viewer. Minus 300k. This hurt also. This also hurt very badly. But it was also not that bad in uh, terms of uh, stacks. Uh, it's like equal to what Phil did. I mean, probably a bit more. I think I played most of it. Uh, PLO 20k and PLO 40k. And it was like four and 300 100 against Tom Dwan, and he's also like crazy spewter, and it can happen very well. You lose a ton, especially the way Tom is playing. I mean, he had like heads up stats in uh, ring games as well. I mean, it wasn't that great, but it was uh, just three or four handed. But yeah, he's obviously way to lose. The part that upsets me today is how badly I played in 2014. If we were looking at a 2005 session, I'd be like, okay, yeah, sure. But I yeah, there's also a video where I go through my biggest pots as seen on High Stakes TV, and I also. Made a lot of terrible plays back then. Don't find it as funny when it was recent enough that I was supposed to be playing really well. Like I was already making run. By the way, rake was just 50 cents back in the day. I think Norway charged a lot more, especially on GG, they charged like 1BB pro hand on PLO. This is ridiculous stuff. But back in the day, it was like basically there was no rake on these stakes. Once videos at this point. Um, so I'm very disappointed in myself. From this night, I guess what I'm hoping is that I was really tilted and let it. I, I'm not happy with that either, though. But yeah, I think I just developed this counter strategy to Isildur that was a really bad one, and you got to see it here today. If you enjoyed that, let me know. I think that's probably a skill of Isildur, but he gets his opponents to tilt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. He, he's a crazy sweet. And this is also like, I have, I have one more guy who's also playing live mostly, 
who is also having this this effect on his opponents and they basically call him down always so he's bluffing a lot but he often has it a, a, a lot but he's great at building an, an image and it's very profitable for him to play especially against recreational players who constantly think that he is bluffing again and then go absolutely bananas and get it in way too light against him and never fold. So yeah, he's probably more plus even than I am in these type of games because yeah, he gets his opponents on tilt and people never believe him and I'm just a nit who always has it. I mean, I also use my image sometimes, but yeah, I also have it quite a lot as I'm the nit. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think I have any sessions this bad saved, but I'm happy to review other sessions I played or other spots. I will see you in the next video. Please click subscribe. Yep. I think that's the end of the video. Thank you for this content, Phil. We, I mean, I enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share if you watch this on YouTube. And also consider to uh, go to my Twitch and also follow me there. Nur, this is the only way to see me live and ask me questions. And yeah, I will also yeah, interact with my audience if I got any. I mean, not much going on at the moment. Yeah, I also, uh, on Twitch, I always announce when I'm going live. And yeah, that's it. Don't forget about my second channel. And a lot of useful links down there if you want to boost your poker game to the next level. Bye. Good luck at the tables.